Wailid Dahdouh joins us now from uh, Gaza. Uh, Wailid, it's great to have you with us. It's great to see you. I, I think so many people who have heard about the incredible loss that you have endured and experienced wonder, how do you get up every day? How do you keep reporting and working the next day? By the grace of God, with the help of God, and the support of God. This is definitely not an easy situation to endure because the loss was huge and the pain and the suffering is even bigger and the cost is very high. But at the end of the day, we ask ourselves, what is the other option? We sit in our homes, waiting for missiles to land, leave this job, give up this humanitarian message that we delivered. This is definitely not an option, at least in our dictionary and according to our convictions, because I am 100% sure that I am carrying a noble, holy, humanitarian message, that all of the international laws and conventions, all the humanitarian norms guarantee. And I'm also convinced that I do my job accordingly to the highest professional standards. Everybody sees that on our screen, most of what we do is carried out live. So therefore, we do not have anything to hide. My family, my wife, my son Mahmoud, my daughter Sham, my grandson Adam, my firstborn Hamza, all these have been through a lot for a quarter of a century because of my difficult job. I do this difficult job in the Gaza Strip, this hot spot. They have sacrificed a lot. They hardly saw me. Maybe I did not perform my duty as a father of a family because of having to do this holy job under this novel humanitarian mission. They got used to that and they suffered. This is a very big sacrifice they made. And they made that sacrifice to enable me to continue my job to the best of my ability and to carry out this task and this job in a way which is compatible to the holy nature of this work. So when the time comes and their blood sheds and their lives are sacrificed, I should leave them and give up this job? Never. It was incumbent on me to be faithful to the blood of my wife, the partner of my life, and my son, who had to play the role of father and an older brother, and my son Mahmoud, who was attending an American school and preparing to be a journalist who speaks English. And Sham, who was the apple of my eye, the flower of my household, she entered school, and my grandson, who was not more than six months, and 14 members of my family, my cousins, who died at the same time. All of this made it incumbent on me to be faithful to them when their blood was dead, because they made the sacrifice. Maybe for all these reasons, I can continue. Do you believe, Wael, that your reporting is actually making a difference in this current uh, war? I try to do my job to the best of my ability, to the best of my strengths in the utmost professional way. And maybe this will make a difference. And for this reason, maybe the reports do make a difference and do have an effect because credibility is important. The confidence, the trust is important. And the viewers and the audience understands that. This is what's important for me to do my job to the best of my ability and to make absolutely certain that I follow the highest standards of professionalism. And I look for the truth without underestimating or overestimating, without falsifying, and to search for the truth, because ultimately what happens in Gaza is big. It's very big. This is a hot spot. So therefore, there is no need to blow things out of proportion, exaggerate or falsify, or provide fake news. On the contrary, to present the naked facts as they are, and to stick to the highest norms of professionalism. This is what will make our stories reach the hearts of the audiences, not on their minds only, because at the end of the day, we're trying to convey what's happening. We are just a link between what's happening on the ground and the audience throughout the world. I did not use this platform, this respectful platform, as a platform for revenge, even though it was a personal thing. And the pain was more than what I could bear. But at the end of the day, I came back carrying out my tasks and job. Well, I, I wanted to ask you specifically about something, which is that the international community of journalists, you know, they've always stood up for each other around the world, defended the freedom of the press. Do you and the other Palestinian journalists in uh, Gaza right now, do you feel you are getting the support you need from Western journalists or press organizations around the world? Unfortunately, we feel that there is some degree of solidarity, support and help. But from our point of view, at least, and because it's us who are paying this painful price, we do not feel that support is enough, is sufficient, or amounts to the level of the high costs we are paying. 
I told you a little while ago that 106 Palestinian journalists have become martyrs as a result of Israeli attacks in less than three months. This is frightening and has never happened in other wars, which lasted 20 years, maybe, according to my knowledge. Yet what happened vis-a-vis those events? Maybe a statement here, a statement there, some efforts, nothing more. This pains us, actually. Many Palestinian journalists feel that they were let down, left alone to face this massacre and this carnage. And the world did not look at the bigger picture, did not really stand by us as we would have liked. We feel that we are being killed twice, once by the bombs and once by this silence, this shy way of expressing support. Let me, if I can, ask you um, about what you are hearing on the ground from Palestinians in uh, Gaza. You speak to them every day. You speak to them a lot more than any of the Western journalists uh, that are reporting on this. What are the people of Gaza telling you about the war, about what they want to happen after this war ends, uh, about Palestinian factions, including Hamas, in the future of Gaza? People here are paying a heavy price, a heavy cost. Their blood, their children, their lives, their houses have been destroyed. More than two-thirds of the Palestinian people are in a state of forceful expulsion. The bloodshed continues every day, the fighting, the bombardment. Definitely, this is not a life for people. People do not want this to happen. This is normal. This is natural. The Palestinian people are not any different than any other people on earth. They love life. They love living life. They love to live like anybody else, to travel when they want to, and to come back home when they want, to build when they want, to rebuild when they want, to live amongst their kids and kin instead of living in a diaspora. These are the kinds of things that people love. And our people are not an exception to this and not any different. We want to live. Our people want to live in peace. But definitely, with the continuation of the occupation, this is very, very difficult. Everybody knows that. In a few years, our generations have had to go through five wars and in between many years of escalation. For education, for example, people who want to travel to further their studies, they can't. People who want to travel to get medical treatment, they cannot do that as freely as other people. Everybody should be able to make the decision to travel whenever you want, to wherever you want to go, to go on holiday or vacation, except for the Palestinian people in Gaza, and this is very painful. This is a very high cost. Many generations have to live through these severe conditions. What do you expect from people? Nobody likes war, and people know the high cost of war. But when you squeeze them in the corner and say to them, what do you feel about war? This is definitely not fair. Everybody wants this war to end today, before tomorrow. But at the end of the day, this is not their choice. This is not their decision. This is not in their hands. Let me ask you, Wael, uh, finally, and I want to ask you a question, maybe not as a journalist, but as a father, uh, as a grandfather, as a husband who has lost so much to Israeli bombs supplied and paid for by American taxpayers. What is your message to the American people and perhaps President Biden, who may be watching this interview. This is a huge injustice that the Palestinian people are subjected to, the Palestinian families are subjected to, the Palestinian children subjected to, the Palestinian women are subjected to, people with special needs in Palestine are subjected to. So therefore, it's incumbent on President Biden, being the president of the most powerful state in the world, who can impose many things, it's incumbent upon him to look with his own eyes at what's happening. What's happening here deserves to be looked at in detail and seriously and transparently. And he should listen to both sides of the narrative, not just one side. It's the right of the Palestinian people. It's my right as a father who was pained, who paid with the blood of his family to speak out about how I feel. I paid a very high cost for the weapons which targeted where my family was and destroys it, levels it to the ground without prior warning. I guess my family and many other families This is a huge injustice. This is a huge transgression. Nobody can bear that. I demand from the American president, I advise the president, to look at what's happening, to listen to what people, ordinary people, who are paying the cost. And they have every right to secure their rights as human beings, as partners in humanity. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, Wael al-Dahdouh, the bureau chief of Al Jazeera Arabic in Gaza, thank you so much for your time uh, and for all of your insights. I greatly appreciate you spending time with us this evening. Thank you.